Hi everyone, it's Helen Horta here, founder of Form Help, and we are on the smarttraveler.gov.au website, and we are doing a smart traveler advice update for the countries of Portugal, Namibia, Italy, Moldova, Indonesia, Mongolia, Timor Leste, Russia, and Finland. I've got a goal. I am trying to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. And if you can help out, that would be great. Thank you. Let's get straight into the daily update. So we'll start with Portugal. Now, as you can see here, it was updated on the 24th of March. And it's still current as at today being the 26th of March. And it reads, direct travel from Australia is currently limited to essential purposes only unless you have an EU COVID-19 vaccination certificate. Now, Australian passport holders can still enter Portugal for non-essential purposes from elsewhere in the EU or approved third countries, including the United Arab Emirates. Travellers aged 12 and over must have a recognised COVID-19 vaccination certificate or a negative COVID-19 PCR or TRAG test to enter. Within Portugal, most COVID-19 measures other than mask wearing have been lifted. Community transmission of COVID-19 is high. Rules may change at short notice and see the travel details below. Local authorities are strongly advising against non-essential travel to the island of Sao George in the Azores due to the recent increase in seismic activity. So see the safety details below. Now the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Portugal due to the impacts of COVID-19. And if we see below again the advice levels are exercise a high degree of caution in Portugal. And if you scroll down below there is more information there for you to read. And that is the latest travel updates from the Australian government for Portugal. Next we'll go to Namibia. Namibia, let's get into it. So this was updated on the 24th of March and it's still current as at today being the 26th of March. Now if you're fully vaccinated you don't need a COVID-19 PCR test before you arrive, yay! But you'll need to present a valid vaccination certificate on arrival in Namibia. Now several destinations continue to restrict entry or transit of travellers from Namibia. Now these restrictions may change at short notice and there are restrictions in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Now if you don't follow COVID-19 regulations you may be subject to legal process including fines so follow the advice of local authorities. Now the Australian government does advise reconsider your need to travel to Namibia due to the impacts of COVID-19 and disruptions to global travel. And if we scroll down below again the advice levels are reconsider your need to travel to Namibia. And if you do scroll down further below there is more information there for you to read. And that is the latest travel updates from the Australian government for Namibia. Next we'll go to Italy. Italy. Now this was updated on the 25th of March and it's still current as at today being the 26th and it reads until the 31st of March you'll need an EU digital COVID-19 certificate or a super green pass to access most venues and businesses except supermarkets and pharmacies and all forms of public transport except taxis. And from the 1st of April you won't need green passes for most outdoor activities. Now Italy recognises Australian vaccine certificates as equivalent to the super green passes. However, the Italian green pass application isn't configured to read the QR code on non-EU format vaccination certificates. If you don't have a super green pass, carry a hard copy of your Australian vaccination certificate with you and see the travel details below. COVID-19 restrictions can change quickly, so check travel advice for updates frequently and follow the direction of local authorities. And the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Italy due to the impacts of COVID-19. Again, the advice levels exercise a high degree of caution in Italy. And if you scroll down below, there is more information there for you to read. And that is the latest travel update from the Australian government for Italy. Next, we'll go to Moldova. Moldova. 
Now this was updated on the 25th of March and is still current as at today being the 26th of March. And it reads, we advise you reconsider your need to travel to Moldova due to the volatile security environment and military conflict in neighbouring Ukraine. Moldovan airspace is restricted. There are only a limited number of flights to and from Moldova. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is ongoing. Heavy fighting, including bombardments, explosions and missile launches, is ongoing around Kiev and other areas of the country. Civilians are being impacted. Land border crossing points with Ukraine and Romania have experienced major delays. Expect and prepare for congested routes, checkpoints, queues and delays. Make sure you have a supply of food water, medication and fuel. Australians are advised not to travel to Transnistria due to the volatile security situation. You should avoid entering Moldova through this region, so see the safety information below. Moldova has announced a nationwide state of emergency and other local restrictions may be implemented with little warning. Now you should not attempt to cross into Ukraine from Moldova and you should follow the instructions of the local authorities at all times. Now Australian government officials have been de deployed to Moldova to know to provide consular assistance to Australians departing Ukraine. Now if you have arrived in Moldova from Ukraine and are in need of assistance, contact the Consular Emergency Centre on 1300 555 135 in Australia or plus 612-6261-3305 outside of Australia. And the Australian government does advise reconsider your need to travel to Moldova overall due to the volatile security environment and military conflict in neighbouring Ukraine and higher levels do apply in some other areas. Now again the advice levels reconsider your need to travel to Moldova and do not travel to Transnistria. And if you scroll down below, there is more information there for you to read. And that is the latest travel updates from the Australian government for Moldova. Next, we'll go to Indonesia. Indonesia. Now, this was updated on the 25th of March and it's still current as at today being the 26th of March. And it reads, to travel to Indonesia, you must be vaccinated with at least two COVID-19 vaccine doses. Now, you'll also need to take a COVID-19 PCR test on arrival and self-isolate at your hotel, accommodation or home until you receive a negative result. Now, children can isolate for the same period as their accompanying parent or carer and partially vaccinated 16 to 17 year olds may be required to complete vaccinations by local authorities after a negative COVID-19 PCR test result. Now, if you test positive for COVID-19 on arrival and you have moderate or severe symptoms, you may be taken to a hospital for treatment or an isolation hotel at your own expense. You can apply for a tourist visa on arrival in Bali if you meet certain requirements. So see the travel details below. Visa on arrival arrangements are currently suspended for the rest of Indonesia. Check the latest visa entry and vaccination requirements with your travel provider or an Indonesian embassy or consulate before travel. And the Australian government does advise exercise a higher degree of caution in Indonesia overall due to security risks, the impacts of COVID-19 and higher levels apply in some other areas. And again, the advice levels are exercise a high degree of caution in Indonesia and reconsider your need to travel to Postal Regency in central Sulawesi and to the Papua province. And if you scroll down below, there is more information there for you to read. And that is the latest travel update from the Australian government for Indonesia. Next, we'll go to Mongolia. Mongolia. Now this was updated on the 25th of March and is still current as at today being the 26th of March and it reads we now advise you exercise a high degree of caution in Mongolia. COVID-19 case numbers have decreased considerably 
from a peak in January, Mongolia has reopened its borders to all travellers. Chinggis Khan International Airport remains the only border point that is currently open. So all land border crossings will reopen on the 1st of April. And you're no longer required to present a negative COVID-19 PCR test to enter Mongolia. However, different requirements may apply depending on embarkation point and airline. Now you don't need to quarantine on arrival and all major domestic COVID-19 restrictions have been lifted. This includes limits on opening hours of businesses and social distancing and the wearing of face masks is still mandatory. Now the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Mongolia due to the impacts of COVID-19 and again the advice levels exercise a high degree of caution in Mongolia and if you scroll down below there is more information there for you to read and that is the latest travel update from the Australian government for Mongolia. Next we'll go to Timor Leste. Timor Leste. Okay so this was updated on the 25th of March and is still current as it today being the 26th of March and it reads we now advise you exercise a high degree of caution in Timor-Leste. COVID-19 case numbers in Timor-Leste have decreased considerably from a peak in Feb. Now fully vaccinated travellers can enter Timor-Leste without prior approval and you must present proof of full vaccination, so two doses at check-in and on arrival. So entry requirements can change with little notice. And if you don't comply with entry requirements, you'll be subject to 14 days quarantine. And the presidential runoff election will be held in April uh, 2022. So see the safety information below. And the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Timor-Leste due to safety and impacts of COVID-19. And again, advice levels exercise a high degree of caution in Timor-Leste. And that is the latest travel updates from the Australian government for Timor-Leste. Next, we'll go to Russia. Russia. Okay, so this was updated on the 26th of March, and it reads, Do not travel to Russia due to the security environment and military conflict with Ukraine. Now, if you're in Russia, leave immediately using the limited commercial options available or private means if it's safe to do so. Now, the Australian government has authorised the voluntary departure of dependents of Australian embassy staff in Moscow, and the security situation could deteriorate further with little warning. So the Russian parliament has passed laws that severely inhibit free speech related to the current situation, imposing restrictions on publishing and distribution of information related to the Russian armed forces and any military operations. Now remain vigilant and avoid any protests or demonstrations and commenting publicly on political developments. Non-practicing bystanders can draw scrutiny from security forces and have been detained. Given the substantial police presence and mass arrests, you should avoid demonstrations and any demonstration related activities. Russian authorities may enforce local laws in an arbitrary manner. If you're in Russia, register your whereabouts on the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trades Registration Portal for Australian citizens in Russia and see the safety section for details on how to register. Now keep your registration details up to date to ensure we're aware of your situation and can provide you with the latest information. Continue to monitor Smart Traveller for updates and if despite our advice you remain in Russia, you may be affected by shortages of essential products and services. Now commercial travel routes between Russia and Europe have been impacted by measures taken in response to military action in Ukraine and a number of Russian airports are now closed to the public. Now the train between St. Petersburg and Helsinki will be suspended from the 28th of March. So if you're planning to depart to Russia, confirm with your transport operator that services are still operating and there are reports of non-Russian credit and debit cards being declined in Russia. Now be prepared with alternate means of payment should your cards be declined. And if you decide to stay in Russia, review your personal security plans and you're responsible for your own safety and that of your family. So make sure your travel documents are up to date and if you have significant concerns for your 
your welfare or that of another Australian, then contact the Consular Emergency Centre on 1300 555 135 in Australia or plus 61 3305 outside of Australia. And the Australian government does advise do not travel to Russia overall due to the security environment and military conflict with Ukraine. And again, the advice levels do not travel to Russia overall and do not travel to North Caucasus. And that is the latest travel update from the Australian government for Russia. And if you are out in Russia or Ukraine, take care, look after yourselves. Okay, last of all, we are going to Finland. Finland. Okay, so as you can see here, it was updated on the 26th of March. And the latest update reads, the land border is open between Finland and Russia. Commercial bus routes are also available and the train service between St. Petersburg and Helsinki will be suspended from the 20th of March. So visit to the Finnish Border Guard websites for more information. And if you're from outside the EU Schengen zone and were born in or before 2006, you must provide certain documentation to enter Finland. And if you can't provide these documents, then you must have an essential reason for entry. Now within Finland, you may be required to show a COVID-19 passport to enter or attend some events and venues. So see the travel details below. Now the Australian government does advise exercise a high degree of caution in Finland due to the impacts of COVID-19. And again, the advice levels exercise a high degree of caution in Finland. And if you scroll down below, there is more information for you to read. And that is the latest travel updates from the Australian government for Finland. And that concludes our Smart Traveller daily update from the Australian government. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Keep safe. And it's Helen Hortai, founder of Form Help, signing out. Bye.